Welcome. Welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concepts of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. So today, we're going to talk about something special, uh, very special that many people don't know about it. So we're going to talk about the Shugendo. And the Shugendo is it's a mixture between Buddhism and the Shinto. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm just uh, reciting the rumor. Uh, I have uh, no idea. So I would love to introduce somebody who can answer this question. So uh, please, please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, Anshu, uh, Stephen Hay. Welcome, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. Uh, let's see what we can discover in our conversation today. Great, great. So uh, in case, uh, you know, for the people who don't know who you are, uh, please tell us a little bit about you. Well, in the 1970s, when I was in my 20s, I moved from America to Japan to study the ninja martial art. It's a very tiny little dojo uh, north east of Tokyo. And through my ninja martial arts study, I discovered Shugendo. Uh, ninja and Shugenja were related in ancient Japanese history. And so I began the study of Shugendo and uh, also some esoteric Buddhist practices as well. Mm, beautiful. So, uh, you know, people call you Anshu, but you know, is this like a great title? Like it's a great master or something? Please tell us, what is Anshu? <laughs> well, it's kind of a interesting title. So I'm head of many dojos and, uh, Oh, I wrote 24 different books about ninjutsu and shugendo, and uh, many people, you know, follow me from the 1970s. So I needed a special title. So we came up with Anshu. So An is a uh, like a retreat hut uh, in a Buddhist G. There's a In and so forth. An is a very small building where warriors or, or monks would retreat to do uh, uh, just some regenerating work. And Shu uh, means head of, the person who's in charge of. So my title, oh, people think it's very impressive. Oh, An Shu, it must mean great master. No, it means person who's in charge of the retreat hut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so that was uh, unexpected. So, but uh, so the next question is so, what is a Shugendo anyway, and how did you get involved? Well, you know, it's, it's rather unusual, I think, for a uh, foreign person in Japan to get involved with Shugendo. Um, it's very much uh, always was in ancient days. A, a, a common person, a lay person's uh, approach to spirituality. So many hundreds of years ago, you know, in the 600s, uh, people in Japan uh, would venture up into the wild mountains with the idea of encountering raw nature, uh, maybe also some spirits, in the old Japanese view, when people died, their spirit would go to the mountains. And I mean, this is many, many hundreds, hundreds of years ago. And people didn't go into the mountains. People would see them in the far distance, but they wouldn't go into the mountains. Those few special ones, Shugenja or Yamabushi, would go into the mountains and have encounters transform themselves uh, and then come back after this spiritual adventure, come back to the lowlands where they would uh, interact with people in the villages and farms, maybe heal them or 
maybe affect the weather or their prosperity or if their children were studying in school, they could give them a, a blessing. Uh, that's kind of an overview of uh, Shugendo. Hmm. Beautiful. So thank you very much. So uh, what is the brief history of Shugendo, by the way? So we, we don't even know how we can start. <laughs> well, you know, it really goes back to ancient Japanese history where people um, had an experience in the mountains. Now, this is maybe before there was much official religion in Japan. We think maybe originally Shinto and then later came Buddhism, Shinto and Buddhism in Japan. Uh, this was kind of before that. And people would uh, go and have a spiritual experience, maybe some scary things. Maybe some people didn't even come back. They were killed by a wild bear or fell off the cliff. It was very dangerous. Uh, the practice itself used some Buddhist teachings, used some Buddhist teachings, also used some Shinto uh, teachings. Uh, maybe some shamanism from uh, way north in China, uh, shamanism, uh, omyodo. Uh, it was all mixed in together. And uh, this would motivate people, inspire people. But also that's why I think not so many foreign people uh, are involved in Shugendo today. It's a very unusual. Uh, very close to old Japanese folk ways. Uh, many Japanese Shugenja don't think foreigners can even understand it. Mm. So, Shugendo is not Buddhism, that's what you're saying. Well, it's not pure Buddhism, but there's uh, uh, esoteric Buddhism use of uh, statues, use of uh, mandala, uh, use of mantra. Uh, Buddhism is a part of Shugendo. So I think what happened in the old days, many, many hundreds of years ago, maybe a Buddhist priest or a Buddhist monk or even a lay person uh, had some practice. He did this practice over and over again, met with some of these uh, Shugenja, and they adopted his practice. They thought of like magic words, mantras, magic words, or uh, in, mudra with hands, magic symbols. Uh, and they adopted these Buddhist teachings. So today, um, most, uh, I think most Shugendo training comes under the guidance of a Tendai or Shingon Mikyo. Uh, there are a few that are not associated, but this was, this was after World War II. See, when the Meiji government uh, took over J Japan, 18, what, 1860s, 1870s. So for to somebody who don't know anything about the Meiji government, the Meiji government is uh, after like a, a Tokugawa, like a samurai government ended. So that it's a, a emperor, government of the emperor, Japanese emperor, I believe. Is that true? Yes. For like 250 years, the Tokugawa family, shoguns, ruled Japan. And the emperor lived oh, tucked away in Kyoto. Nobody saw the emperor. Uh, and so the Meiji government, we brought the emperor back into Tokyo and restored, uh, got rid of the samurai, uh, cut off a top knot, got rid of the swords, got rid of the samurai, and had the emperor, we call him Emperor Meiji, from the uh, 1870s. Uh, he became the ruler. Now, whether he really ruled Japan or not, debatable. There were councils and 
boards of people. Some think maybe just use this emperor in name. Samurai day is over. We'll bring the emperor back, Emperor Meiji. And uh, everything became westernized, very westernized. Clothing, uh, um, mannerisms, uh, books, all became very westernized. And they made Shugendo illegal, the, the new Meiji government. Uh, now, I've asked my Shugendo teachers many times, why did this become illegal? I mean, they burned up scrolls. Uh, they prevented people from practicing. And I can't get a clear answer. Uh, I think it had to do with the Meiji government, 1870s emperor government, people trying to fit into the West. They wanted a more sophisticated uh, kind of religion to match the Christianity and Judaism of the West. And so they reformulated Shinto and uh, made the emperor the divine uh, uh, background. Uh, it was a more sophisticated. And so the funny Shugendo people up in the mountains um, having these experiences, uh, some of them were, were uh, blind, especially women, blind women were very sensitive for healing and predicting the future. Uh, some people, a little crazy, a little crazy, not quite balanced. And so they could have these shamanic journeys into other realms and then come back and predict. Meiji government got, ri got rid of all of that and said, we now, Japanese, follow Shinto. Uh, after World War II, religious freedom was restored to Japan. So, you know, 1940s, uh, they allowed uh, many different religions, including Shugendo. But it had been like 100 years, 100 years in there where nobody was practicing. And so people tried to restore the idea of what the Shugendo was. And uh, um, so it's a very complicated history for such a very personal uh, spiritual system. Mm. Very interesting. So you mentioned about the Shugenja and the Yamabushi. Uh, I think they are very uh, confusing. Uh, so are they the same thing, the like synonym, or are they a different thing? Well, I think for most people, it is like a synonym, Shugenja. So Ja means person who practices Shugen, which is mysterious mastery, mysterious mastery person, Shugen Ja. Yamabushi is, uh, Yama is mountain, and uh, Fushi is like submitting, uh, lying down, submitting. So person who submits himself to the mountain's power and so these are kind of like synonyms. Um, maybe today some people practice uh, Shugen in the city. They have like a temple. Looks kind of like a Buddhist temple. They wear black uh, Buddhist robes. Um, maybe the Kesa is a little different. And they might have a, uh, a Tokin, uh, like a hat. Um, but look pretty much like Buddhist priest. Yamabushi is one who goes into the mountains. And so they wear all white. We wear all white um, and uh, go up into the mountains to find this connection with uh, nature. Uh, you know, this all white, people in America may not realize it, but in Japan, white robes are what uh, dead people wear for a funeral. Dead people wear white robes. <laughs> so I was told that uh, we wear all white in the mountains. So if we're killed, oh, we're ready for a funeral. We don't even have to get ready. Uh, it's giving up 
uh, ego, giving up idea of what I'm going to have, and just be totally open, even to the point of death. Wow. That's, uh, you know, people have to be prepared to be uh, Yamabushi. I can, I can tell. So, uh, yeah, so how do you practice uh, Shugen? Well, there are um, small groups and individual practice. Uh, there are liturgies that are repeated, some from Shinto. Uh, a Shinto liturgy that repeats uh, ancient method for how we become purified. We go into the mountains, we go under waterfall, water washes this away, this impurity goes into the rocks, it goes into the earth. Uh, it explains how we become purified and to repeat this over and over again, we become more and more familiar with that. You know, the idea is that as a human being, you know, maybe when we're born, uh, we don't have much personality. Uh, and as years go by, we try to fit in, we try to learn, uh, we try to get the best for ourselves. And sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, sometimes we make people angry at us. Uh, sometimes uh, we think we're doing good thing, but we're really doing a bad thing. And the idea is this gets caught on our personality and what if we could wash this away? What if we could purify this to become just a very pure, beautiful, like a shining mirror, uh, clean, clear heart? I know what is true uh, spiritually. I try to return as much benefit as I can to my fellow people. I try to help others become purified. So this is now kind of Buddhist influence, um, what would be called Mahayana Buddhism. I study, I understand how life works. I understand how I cause myself suffering. Usually I'm trying not to suffer and the things we do causes suffering. And we try to avoid those things that we think will bring suffering, but actually those are the good things that we should follow. Once we can clarify that, we turn and try to help others to understand, help others to see. Uh, so this is uh, Mahayana Buddhism, so some Shinto, some Buddhism. Also, there is a practice of, uh, for certain people, um, like go into a trance. You can practice drumming, boom, 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 boom. Drumming uh, creates a rhythm that changes the brain wave function. Maybe we discover some new, a different view, a different reality. Um, and then from there, sometimes people don't even remember what they say. They're, they're speaking, they're explaining things. Later, they come back to consciousness. Uh, people have written down what they said. Oh, so this is like the shaman part of Shugendo. So all of these are like the beginning practice of uh, a Shugen job. Wow. <laughs> it sounds so complicated. So I don't think we can really understand it in one episode. So, but. <laughs> So how do you do this practice, like a mountain practice in America, in the United States of America? So how do you, how do you lead that? Well, that's a really good question because it's such a Japanese uh, basic uh, practice. And a lot of Yamabushi, a lot of Shugenja, Interesting people, <laughs> interesting people in Japan. A um, little bit what we call iconoclast. Um, they don't go along with the uh, conventional living. You know, they get out into the mountains. Um, so we have uh, memorized practices 
So for one thing, we might revere the founder of Shugendo. So this practice is uh, called Dai Bosatsu, Dai Bosatsu uh, Ho. Uh, and the founder of Shugendo, legendary founder, back in the 600s, was a character named En no Gyoja. En no Gyoja was not a priest, he was a lay person, but he was determined to develop these spiritual qualities that could help. Oh, and they're famous stories, you know, about him going into the mountains and mountain spirits, demons tried to throw him away, but he managed to train these demons uh, uh, to serve him, uh, to change their evil or mischievous ways into uh, good ways. So we practice, you know, we start with a purification, um, we recite, we can visualize. Now this is kind of like esoteric Buddhism. Uh, we can visualize in our mind the reality of this uh, and the ascetic or en no gyoja, uh, see his face, uh, see his bearing, um, see the surroundings, and we we kind of become that in our own mind. We become uh, en no gyoja, uh, and then in our mind we can practice doing these good things, beneficial things uh, for people. We recite some of the Buddhist uh, Four Noble Truths, Buddhist Eightfold Path, um, and we wind up with uh, Shinto purification. Uh, sounds kind of strange, you know, to try to describe it. Uh, but that's a way that we all can practice together and as individuals. As we, as humans, uh, you know, we do our best, we do our best, but we live flawed lives and we make mistakes. And a lot of times, you know, we can be our own worst enemy. You know, we criticize ourselves. Uh, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not very good at this. Oh, I have a temper. Oh, I'm too easygoing. Uh, oh, my child is going crazy. Uh, my wife doesn't understand me. You know, we can say all these kind of things. And but truly, deep inside, that's just stuff we've accumulated. We purify that, we get rid of that. I mean, really get rid of that. How many people do you know? You know, they're always criticizing themselves and uh, uh, not thinking highly. Uh, no, inside, you are a beautiful spirit, your white shining light if you could just accept that. But, you know, it's maybe like clouds, cloudy day, always clouds. The sun is there. The sun is shining brightly, but we can't see it because of this clouds. Just get rid of the clouds and you can see the sun. And that's, that's uh, works the same with the human. Just get rid of these false realities and see yourself for the bright light that you are. And so this Enno Gyoja is kind of symbol kind of symbol for that bright, shining presence that we all, we all could be. Wow. Thank you very much for that. So, yes, so, you know, tell us about uh, this Yamabushi training in the mountain. So what do you exactly do? It's like, it's like a, uh, you're going to just go into the mountain and, you know, try not to get lost and uh, just to, uh, it's a camping or to, what is it? Well, in America, um, we have about three times a year, one time in Los Angeles and one time in Boulder, Colorado, and one time in Western North Carolina. I have groups of students. And uh, so we start out into the mountains and spend all day walking, little trail through the, the trees and the peaks. And we'll walk and just let go, you know, of these, oh, uh, we think is so important, you know. We just let go of the pressures from 
city living and who we are and our family, just let it go. And then uh, along the way, uh, I conduct uh, guided meditations where people uh, close their eyes, sit on a rock maybe, and uh, I can lead them into these uh, meditations that allow their mind to catch on and make these very, very personal discoveries. So my leading is general talk, but the people uh, can develop uh, their own special insights. Anyway, we do this for many hours as we walk uh, through the mountain peaks. Wow. What? You know, I would like to participate that one day. That would be very exciting. So uh, this would be last question. So what is the Shugen view of Buddhist sculptures? Well, um, Shugen uses uh, these Buddhist sculptures and has for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, now, they have their own special... Um, unique to Shugendo sculptures, but most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You know, they see carved wood. Um, so uh, the main, one main Shugen temple in Yoshino, you know, enshrines Amitabu, uh, Shakyamuni, uh, Yakshinyorai, just uses those Buddhist statues and people revere the statue but then there are other statues, uh, Zhao Gongen. Zhao Gongen is a very fierce uh, figure up on one leg, stamping down with another leg, and holds a, a Buddhist thunderbolt, Vajra, uh, Kongo. And, uh, that, and when you see this, you know, oh, this is Shugen, this is Shugen. Or the Enno Gyoja, you know, his statue, um, he has, uh, cape on and uh, kind of uh, cloak over his uh, face, long white beard, kind of like mine, only longer, you know, and uh, uh, very piercing eyes. He has a staff with six rings. Uh, he's surrounded by these uh, Goki, Genki, these demons. Um, People see that, they know, oh, this is Enno Gyoja, this is Yamabushi. But the skill in carving this wood, same as the Buddhist statue, uh, people would apprentice, they would start very small. And in fact, a very small statue was called, uh, when they were apprentice, masterpiece. That's what he did to become a master. He does a masterpiece People see this, oh yes, yes, you've graduated. Or no, study more. Uh, uh, so apprentice would study under, uh, you know, and some people had specialties. Uh, maybe a special one who's carving uh, Fudo Myo, very fierce, angry, you know, with fire. He would be a specialist in maybe a seated Fudo or standing Fudo or somebody becomes a specialist in uh, uh, canon. So maybe 11 head canon or uh, wish fulfilling jewel canon or uh, four armed canon. He just carves this one. Uh, so I think this is, this is where your uh, documentary is gonna be very interesting to see. You know, I, I think I can learn a lot by watching this and discovering uh, just exactly what it takes uh, in this modern age. This is it remarkable. In this modern age, apprentice system still works. Uh, apprentice system still exists. Uh, this old masters teaching the young ones, uh, just like it was hundreds of years ago. Uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting documentary when you're ready to release it. Uh, thank you very much. I cannot ask you uh, any more uh, compliment than that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So we are going to get it out as soon as possible. So, uh, yes, uh, tell us about how can I find you and uh, what kind of like a, uh, 
like information, activities, or like books you published, anything? Tell us so that we can find out more about you. Well, um, I have several websites. One is my name, just written like one word, Stephen K. Hayes, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-K-H-A-Y-E-S dot com, Stephen K. Hayes dot com. We have Ninja Life dot TV, Ninja Life dot TV. And there's a little bit of uh, the spiritual practice on there, but that's where people can subscribe and study our uh, art. Um, Oh, I have so many books out that uh, it would be impossible to list them all. So maybe go to Amazon, go to amazon.com and just type in Stephen K. Hayes, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-K-H-A-Y-E-S, and lists of uh, the books will appear um, uh, on, the, on the screen so people could see some of the uh, books that I've written. Uh, I think those would be maybe a, a way of course, I'm available on Facebook, uh, Stephen K. Hayes. Uh, yeah, so people could uh, try to get involved and see what we're doing. Maybe they want to join us. Ah, for sure, for sure. You know, you have a lot of things to offer. I think you are a very multidimensional person. So I'm very excited to know more about you. So, uh, yes, if you guys think this information is useful, make sure to subscribe to uh, this YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and like me on my Facebook, because that's how we do it in the 21st century. And Anshu and uh, I are doing that together. So thank you so much, everybody.